Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to take a look and see what else derivatives can do. And for one thing, it can help you find the maximum or minimum value of a function. Here we have two parabolas that we've drawn, one that opens downward, one that opens upward. You can see there's a point on the parabola right here that will represent the highest value of the function. No other point on the, on the graph will be a higher value for y. Over here you can see there's a point on the graph that represents the lowest value of this function. There's no other function, there's no other point on the graph that gives you a lower value. These are of course the two vertices of the two parabolas. The derivative can help you find those points. And the way we can do that is with an example, there you have a function, y equals minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 4. Remember, what is the slope at those two locations? Notice that the slope over here can be represented by a horizontal line because the tangent there will be horizontal line. The slope over here can be represented by a horizontal line. So therefore you know that at the points where the function reaches a maximum value or a minimum value, the slope must be equal to zero. And since the slope is equal to the derivative, that means the derivative there must equal zero. So let's go ahead and use this example. So we're going to find the derivative, y prime is equal to bring the exponent to the front, minus 3 times 2, x to the 2 minus 1 value, plus 1 times 6, x to the 1 minus 1 value, plus of course 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. And so this can be uh, simplified to y prime is equal to minus 6x uh, plus 6. Now, we know, we don't know what the function looks like, it's probably not going to be like either one of these two, but we do realize that this is now the derivative, and we're going to find the maximum or the minimum. So to find the max or min, we're going to set the derivative y prime equal to zero because remember we know that at the maximum or the minimum point the derivative is zero and so we're going to set the derivative equal to zero so we can solve for the value for x that will tell me where the derivative is zero so when we do that we go zero equals minus 6x plus 6 moving the 6 to the other side or simply moving the 6x to the other side we get 6x is equal to 6 or x is equal to 1 so when x equals 1, the derivative y prime equals 0. The derivative is 0, which means that's where the slope is 0. That's where we find either the maximum or the minimum. Then plugging this value back in the original function, we're going to find out what the corresponding y value is. So y, when x equals 1, is equal to minus 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 4. So this is equal to minus 3 plus 6 minus 4, minus 3 minus 4 is minus 7 plus 6, that's equal to minus 1. So when x equals a positive 1, y is a negative 1. So let's find that point on the graph. So there's our y-axis, there's our x-axis. So when x equals 1, y is negative 1, so there's the point. That's where the slope of the function is 0, which means that either the function will look like this, Therefore, it's a minimum point, or the function will look like this, and therefore, it's a maximum point. Which of the two is it? Well, to find that, again, we use the property of the derivative. Notice when the function is like this, so that it becomes a minimum point, to the left, the function is decreasing, that means there's a negative slope. If it looks like this, that means to the left, the function is increasing, and means a positive slope. So if I plug in x equals 0 into the derivative, I either get a positive or negative value. Let's go ahead and try that. So where's my derivative? My derivative is right over here. I'm now going to evaluate my derivative when x equals 0 and see what we get. So y prime when x equals 0 is equal to minus 6 times 0 plus 6, which is equal to 6. That's a positive value, which means to the left of that point, my slope is positive, which means it must look like this. That means my function must look something like that. So what does it help us do? It helps us to find maximum or minimum values. In addition to that, it helps us determine if it's a maximum or if it's a minimum value. So derivatives can do a whole lot of things for us including finding maximum values, and that's why we need derivatives.